Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds, all the nerds together, carrying on with these World Cup videos, and we've just watched the game. Pakistan have lost to India more, well, maybe more so than India have beaten Pakistan. Probably a bit of both going on there. I think India bowled very well, um, but we're going to talk about that. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about England as England fans. We're going to complain about them a bit later. But let's start with the the positives, I guess, with India carrying on their impressive win form against Pakistan in World Cups. Pakistan just struggle, don't they? I think India know that every World Cup they're going to free, get a free win against Pakistan. Um, but it was quite a tight game and it was really good to watch. James, thoughts on the game? It was unbelievable. Um, we know that New York is a new pitch. Um, they've really kind of struggled to make it play very well. So it's always going to be a low scorer. And when India batted first or were put into bat and scored 119, you kind of just thought, right, okay, this is going to be a walk in the park for Pakistan. They got less than a run of ball to get. Mm. And the way that India bowled was outstanding. The way Pakistan just crumbled was very Pakistan-like. It was a very, very entertaining game, and it came right down to it as well. Um, they needed 12 of the last two balls, Pakistan. So it was it was a proper low-scoring thriller, and I I still think they are some of the best games in T20, without a doubt. Um, the the low-scoring thrillers are, are awesome. Yeah, they're so exciting, aren't they? And, I mean, props to Rishabh Pant today, who looked like he was batting on a different track to everyone else. And really, it was, you know, he did the bulk of the work in getting India up to a score they could actually, you know, bowl at. Give them, it's, it's that classic phrase that we hear in, in, in village cricket. Let's let, let's get a score. Let's get something to bowl at, lads. You know, that's, that's something that we've all heard um, every now and then. And, and again, and and massively did that. And, and it was, yeah, really his contribution that that I would say, allowed India to bowl so positively and and and, and for ultimately them to be able to to win the game. So yeah, it was a real stand out performance for, for 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 me. I think slightly disappointing for that middle order of India. As we say, that New York pitch has been hard, hasn't it? It's it's yeah. not been a, a batter's paradise. Apart from um I'm pretty sure there was one team that scored quite a few. Um I'll have to go back and find who scored a few runs on the New York pitch, but yeah, it, it's been um, tricky for everyone to say the least. I mean, Pant's innovation kind of helped on that pitch. He's scores in very unorthodox areas. I mean, you got people like um, Surya Kumar Yadav and Joss Butler who they hit the unorthodox shots. So you see a lot of the ramps, the scoops hitting the ball in, in those sorts of areas, 360 cricket. Whereas Pant, it's the areas that he hits the ball in, which I think is more impressive. His shot making is just normal shot making. Sometimes it can even look like slogging sometimes, but his just ability to just find those gaps in areas where the bowler obviously isn't bowling it, I think is really impressive. Um, and, and that sort of player who's able to find those gaps in weird ways is, is going to be effective on these sorts of wickets where it is hard to score. Um, I mean, the Pakistan quick bowlers today look really on, on form. Um, Shaheen Sharafridi, if he's on song, then it's it's dangerous for most teams um, facing that first up. But then Harris Ralph, for me, when he plays for Pakistan, he's not as consistent as he is in the Big Bash. When he plays for Pakistan, some games he'll be really good, and then the next game he can look terrible. But today he just seemed to be hitting all the right areas. And those Pakistan quick bowlers, we know they're good at, at, at um, finding these really good pace bowlers. And it's just a shame that when they've got a batting lineup, which seems to be quite talented, you've got Babaraz and Rizwan opening the innings as well. And they just don't seem to be, I don't know, they just don't seem to have that right impetus. I don't know if, should they be playing more positively, James? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, potentially. I mean, it was a low score. So you kind of just think, you know, just stick around, lads. Um, mm. like that, I, I feel like it was the perfect score for a Rizwan and Baba Azam kind of partnership. But Baba Azam uh, went out first up to the cheat code, Bumrah. And then, um, you know, Rizwan also came to, to Bumrah's brilliance. And that was, 
that was the story of it really and and you still mm. you saw how useful bummer was on that pitch it was doing all sorts of the seamers and the towards the end of the innings the ball that really summed up how well bummer had bowled was um i can't remember who it might have been to imad imad was seen mm. it was uh just just sort of a, a back of length bouncer from um from Jasper Bumra, and it was a slower ball, and it was one of the one of his off cutters. You know when he yeah, gets yeah, yeah. Of turn, it, and yeah, it yeah. Like jagged from sort of outside leg, and was sort of close to his close to his shoulder. And I was like, that is absolutely ridiculous how he's done that. Um, that that that's the kind of delivery that you're just like, well, how do you play that? Because you, you first of all you struggle to pick Bumra anyway because his action's yeah. really weird. And then it's a slower ball, and it's turned more than most off breaks. It was, um, and that that's what summed up how brilliant Bummer was, but how brilliant everybody else was as well. I thought Arshdeep Singh at the death was absolutely yeah, class. Um, he, he, you know, he he got the dot balls when they mattered. He got a wicket when he mattered. It was, uh, it was just very very impressive from those Indian bowlers. To be able to defend such a slow, to- such a low total against a Pakistan side that really should have done a lot better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just to go back on the Bumra thing. I mean, when you get a full toss in cricket as a batsman, the best place to have it is when the ball's about your knee roll height, because that's just perfectly in the middle of the bat for you to swing through. Um, Bumra bowled in his last over. I think he bowled two full tosses that were about that height. And the batsmen weren't able to hit him away. And the last ball got the top edge and was caught. And the fact that he's bowling with that ridiculous angle, I don't know if it's the release point or something, because usually if you get a full toss and it's just below waist high, that's quite difficult to hit. But he's bowling them in like the perfect areas to be hit, but it's just rushing the bats and it's so hard. Um, and yeah, it just it just sums up how good a bowler he is. Um, or how awkward his bowling is for batters to face. Yeah, for um, sure. Crazy. For sure. I think... Um... Yeah, it, it, it's just a cheat good, isn't it? And I think it's something that any team would kill to have. Mm. And speaking of any team with disappointing bowling and would kill to have someone like Jasper Bumra, let's move on to talk about England because mm. we have a lot of thoughts about <laughs> that woeful performance against Australia. The um, defending champions are not looking good. I think they looked okay against Pakistan in, in that series. But I don't know what has happened since they've hit Barbados or or, or 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 hit the Caribbean. But I mean, the bowling to Australia. I mean, Will Jacks is a great bowler, I think, in T20. But to give him the second over, and for Travis Head to treat him <laughs> how he treated him, yeah, it was um outrageous, wasn't it? Yeah, it's crazy because you look at. Australia's batting lineup and the strength is at the top. So why not bowl Jofra Archer in like one of the first overs? And because didn't they bowl Moeen Ali first over? He did all right. And then they bowled Will Jack. Why not just throw the ball to Jofra Archer? See if you can pick up an early wicket. You know, it's not going to go for that many runs. But yeah, Jack seemed just like a crazy choice. Um, But that was just one over out of all of them. I mean, it wasn't for me looking at it. I don't think it was a 200 pitch. I don't know what you guys think. No, um, I, I, I think it, it shouldn't have been a two hundred pitch. I, I, I do agree. They probably got sort of 10, 10 runs over par, um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that England's batting was also really bad. But we'll get on to that. Um, let's complain about their bowling a bit more. And first of all, I do want to say that Australia played really well. Uh, Australia absolutely were the better side, probably are the better side. Um, captaincy decisions were spot on in the field for Australia, but with their batting, they put away the bad balls and there were a lot of them to put away. Mark Wood, he's always going to be a very hit and miss kind of bowler. Um, he, he he just bowls such a fast pace, but he doesn't have a whole lot of control on, over what he's doing. So, I think he strikes me as quite um, a rhythm bowler and a feel bowler. Some some bowlers will kind of aim for a certain spot on the pitch and they'll be able to hit it. Whereas 
Mark Wood is very much, uh, if he's feeling in a good way, then the ball will just naturally go in the good areas and he'll end up picking up a five for, for barely anything. Mm. Um, but when it goes wrong, it goes badly wrong. And he wasn't even the worst of the bowlers. You know, Chris Jordan is clueless when he's when he's bad, um, which is semi-often. Adil yeah. Rashid looked completely impotent. And yeah, Will Jacks, I, that to me brings up the biggest issue, which is um, something that we brought up the 50 over World Cup as well, which is Joss Butler's captaincy. Um, I, I just, I really don't think he's a very good captain. And it's sad to say, I think he he is to England's white ball what Joe Root is to England's red ball, which is the best batter, but not that great a captain. Mm-hmm. Just the 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 decisions and all all that goes with it just haven't been quite on it. Well, I, I think I disagree because he did guide England to the T Twenty World Cup only two years ago. So he can't be I wanna, that bad of a captain. Can I come back on that? Yes. Owen Morgan retired, what, a few months, if that, before that World Cup. Okay. All of the players that played in it were still playing under Owen Morgan. I honestly think it was just like the dregs of Morgan's captaincy, the leftovers that got them through that World Cup. <laughs> I don't think Butler actually made a, fit, a single innovative and original decision in that World Cup that Morgan wouldn't have made. Potentially. I mean, I disagree a little bit because I think that the the choosing of Sam Curran over Chris Jordan was a big thing that happened in that World Cup that never happened before. And I think Sam Curran was one of the reasons why England won the last T20 World Cup in Australia. Now, notably missing from this squad is Sam Curran. And yeah, I know he's going through a bit of a patch of, of poor form and he didn't have the greatest of IPLs, but he's still a really class player. And I actually believe that Sam Curran should be in the best England eleven. I think he takes Chris Jordan's spot, in my, in my view. Um, everyone's it's, it's everyone's a, a better player when they're not in the squad. Though, well, that's they? true. That's that's the issue but, yeah. we have. And realistically, it was poor planning and very poor execution, and that, that was the issue. Zach, have you got anything more to complain about with the bowling before we complain um, about the batting? Not really the bowling as much because I think that England's bowlers had an off day. I think we can put it down to that. I mean, I've seen England's bowlers bowl a lot better. Um, I feel like we are missing that reliable player. Um, like I know Joffrey Archer is really good and it's great that he's back in. And he's really exciting. But that reliable option, who's not necessarily the superstar, but you can bank on him going at eight and over, taking like an odd wicket in a power play. Like in times gone past, it was Liam Plunkett or David Willey. There isn't that sort of banking player in there. And I think that's what England are missing. I mean, Adil Rashid, I don't think he's going to bowl that badly again in this tournament. Well, at least I hope I don't, because <laughs> if he does, it'll be bad for England. Uh, but England have plenty of spin options. Liam Livingston actually did quite well. Um, I think Will Jack can bowl better. So I'm not bothered about England's bowling. It's their batting, which I think is the one that I have least confidence in. Like we can say England bat deep, but when you say a team bats deep, it means you've got people coming in at number seven and eight who can swing you that match winning 30 off 15, 16 balls. England have that from batter number five. They don't have it from batter seven or eight. And I I just think England's lower to middle, middle to lower order. I just don't have the confidence in them. I don't want to see Moe Nally walking in at number five. Um, And I don't know what you think, but I actually think England should have been a bit more horses for courses with this World Cup. Joe Root would actually be all right in these conditions, scoring, I don't know, a 40 off 30 balls. Um, I'm not sure your guys' thoughts. I, I think it depends where you are because, like, if... I mean, England haven't played at New York yet. No. Um, it, I don't think England they're going playing, to, are they? Well, unless they make it through to the um, playoffs, which is looking... Well, the Super 8, eight sorry. Um but yeah, those group games look like they were all going to be in the West Indies. So it's going to be different style of tracks. It's tracks that all these England players have played on previously. Yeah. Whereas New York's a bit of a a bit of a new um and 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 Texas. Like very few of the England players have, because I didn't see many of them in the Major League Cricket. So I think on a ground like New York, I think Jerry Root would be fantastic. Um in the in the Caribbean. I mean, we know Jerry Root can play in the Caribbean because he he scored hundreds there when it was the 
flattest wicket of all time series before he um before he retired as as test captain. So I I, I don't know. I think England are in an interesting position. I think they've just not hit the ground running properly for their World Cup. Let's let's say it how it is, right? They didn't really play any warm up games before their first group game and that then was rained off against Scotland. So with the weather there, I don't think they've really had as much time to practice in the West Indian conditions as possible. Like they looked quite good when Pakistan toured England. And I think that the World Cup's come at an, a very odd time because normally there's a lot of T20I series just before a World Cup, whereas actually there's been hardly any because of the yeah. IPL. So actually, is there a shout to say that the IPL is ruining the World Cup for everyone apart from the Indian players? I I, I don't know. Because it's also very different conditions to the West Indies too. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I want to jump in early. <clears throat> what you're saying about Joe Root I wouldn't have picked him I still wouldn't pick him I I I just think there's like I said everybody's a better player when they're in, not in the side yeah, no I get that yeah and I definitely think Joe Root is one of them um he, yeah no don't want to see it um not not interested by it I think I do definitely agree with you in the there just isn't the reliability in that in that England batting attack, and there's not a whole lot of excitement either. But who would you I pick love instead? The... Well, so I'd happily see Ben Duckett in there over over Johnny Bairstow, um, because I think he has the ability to bat in those Test match conditions. But he's also very innovative. He can be a little bit like a like a Rishabh Pant, where he, he he'll get he, he'll score in those unorthodox areas. Um, I honestly, I'm not 100 percent sure that there, there aren't a ton of players coming through that like really leap out at the moment, and that's maybe you know a, an interesting thing for England to kind of look at is where mm -hmm. are they going to go with this because there's people like Jamie Smith that are sort of coming through a bit, but they haven't fully broken through. They don't have the experience. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have taken Jamie Smith to the World Cup either. Okay. So. Yeah, Sam Hain is another one. Uh, I I would probably pick Sam Hain over Joe Root as a if I was going to pick sort of a more anchory type player. Um, David Milan, another one, same sort of vibes. But I think the issue is that there are certain players that are very talented that haven't yet come to the fore in the big matches. Harry Brook being one. I I don't think I've ever seen him perform in an England shirt with T twenties, um, or at least when it really matters. Yeah, and then Liam Livingston, I think he's dining out on that Pakistan series from 2019, still, isn't he? Um, you know, <laughs> but so is he, Harry he... Brook. That's when Harry Brook did well. It was those two in the middle overs. Um, yeah, I, think, I no, don't. That, that, that Harry Brook was a bit after. But... Maybe, yeah, maybe a few years ago. Yeah, but like as well, like Moeen Ali. When did you last see Eng... Moeen Ali win a game for England with the bat? I would, Ten years I would ago? actually put Moeen Ali in in a in a funny little category called small game players, mm. um, where Moeen Ali will win you a match if it doesn't really matter, yeah. or um, he'll play the greatest knock you've ever seen in a losing cause, but he doesn't often play the match winning knocks, and that's that, that's just how it is. I, I think he um, he potentially is like a low pressure kind of player. He seems quite a chilled out guy. So maybe when the stakes are high, it's it's doesn't quite doesn't quite work for him. But I think the the main issue was the bowling. Yeah, you know, they, they were chasing far too many runs to begin with, and that's why they ended up 165 for six at the end. Was they had to they constantly felt like they were behind the scoring rate. So I think um, Chris Jordan out and Sam Curran in would make sense to me. That that's yeah fine. Um, and then. I would, I and I would have done this the whole time. I would have only played one of Joffre Archer and Mark Wood, because mm -hmm. I think they offer you very similar things. They are high pace, but yeah. Mark Wood is, you know, sort of a bit all over the place, and Joffre Archer is very kind of rusty. So I would much rather have seen Reese Topley in there, yeah, because I think the level of control. I think he's that person you're talking about earlier that can will just go at eight and over. Um, unless he's part of a very weak RCB bowling attack, I yeah. think he will generally perform quite well. Yeah. So 
I, I would have I would have really liked to see Reese Topley come in. So th- those yeah. would be the two changes I'd, or three changes I'd, I'd I would I would be tempted to get rid of Johnny Bairstow as well and get in mm-hmm. Ben Duckett. But if they don't do that, I'm I'm okay with it. But I think yeah, Jordan yeah. out, Curran in, and Wood out, and Topley in would be the changes I'd make. I mean, the pitches are probably better suited for Reese Topley. Um, and what what we're looking for from England is obviously we we think their batsmen their team's good because before the tournament we were rating their team quite highly. I think yeah. we just need that confidence back from having a middle over partnership of like 50, like a 50 over, um, let me start again, a 50 run partnership in the middle, someone like Harry Brook scoring a big score, Johnny Bairstow getting in. Um, but yeah, I mean, England, not so good, but when you compare that with a team like Australia, where they've got Stark, Cummins, uh, Hazelwood, Adam Zampa completely out bowled Adil Rashid. Um, they just seem to be on a different different yeah. plane, really, in terms and, of their bowling. That seems to be uh, what's holding Australia together as well. I agree. And I think it's worth saying that as well about the Australian performance is that, you know, Australia outplayed England in every facet of the game. We've talked about their batting in terms of how all of that Australia top order dismantled the, the England bowlers, but also their bowling was phenomenal I, I think you look down that that scorecard and i think all of them with possibly the out the exception of mitchell stark who was was oddly expensive but were phenomenal i think particularly as as, as you say the spin of adam zampa was fantastic and i think um australia really managed to get it right with their team as well i think you know having the the seamers of the out and out quicks of Hazelwood and Cummins. Um, Marcus Stoyne is offering something a bit different, but he's been bowling fantastically through the tournament too. He bowled really well against, um, uh, I want to say it was a, a man, I think, Yeah, yeah. Um, in their first game. And then Adam Zampa, I mean, in my opinion, he's the number one T20 spinner in the world right now um, in internationals. I think he's just performing fantastically um and yeah he's going to be a real important thing for australia and they're looking really strong to win this and be the um the new both world cup holders which england were and for test a little world bit. championship <laughs> holders as well so they're just looking yeah for they'll, they'll have the yeah, triple. yeah. Um, because we keep talking about how india seem to be this best team in the world india have got all the players but actually as annoying as it is, Australia yeah. seem to actually be the best team in yeah. the world because they're the ones that appear yeah. to turn up at the real big moments. But the less said about that, the better. Yeah, I mean they should they should comfortably win this group. Uh, but co- uh, coinciding with the India Pakistan game, there was another game going on, which was Scotland versus Oman, and Scotland absolutely hammered Oman um, by like forty something balls. They, they scored the runs, which mean that Scotland are really pushing to have a massive net run rate. Because if they finish, yeah. if if England beat a man in Namibia and Scotland beat a man in Namibia and lose to Australia, then it's all down to net run rate. Um, and obviously Scotland will be wanting to have that better net run rate than England. Um, that's what everyone's talking about at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see what goes on there. Uh, but yeah, so much more to come. This World Cup isn't going as we predicted it, uh, which I think everyone we probably expect anyway, because our predictions are always wrong. Um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens. Can Stick I have a hot around. take? A hot yes. take before we Go end. for it. I think we're going to have some fantastic games on Wednesday. I predict Namibia to beat Australia. Oh my goodness. And cause a massive upset. And the United States of America to beat India. Well, well you heard well, it there. It is. First. Right. <laughs> if, if Benji gets that right, then Zach will go bald. <laughs> that, no. I was going to suggest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Zach, Zach's shaving his head. If, if, if Namibia both... beat Australia, <laughs> if Namibia beat Australia and USA beat India, then you heard it here first. Zach will shave <laughs> off all of his hair. We'll we'll see. About we'll have to that. clear it with his um, wife first. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel. Like the video, it helps us out so much. You can support us for further by becoming a member. Um, what else can you do? You can leave a comment telling us, um, I don't know, who do you think is going to win? It's 
I think at the moment it's quite obvious like who's at the top. But yeah, can England make it through? Who knows? But yeah, we'll see you next time. Take care.